Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the flat rate scheme. Now, we've talked about it before on this channel with QuickBooks Online, but over on the Boffix channel, we've just done a big video on explaining exactly what the flat rate scheme is. So if you're VAT registered and thinking about going flat rate scheme or was wondering what the flat rate scheme is, head over to that video, have a look at it. And if you're still interested in it and you're looking to use QuickBooks Online to do your flat rate scheme, then we've done a video on the basics of it, giving you some introduction on how the flat rate scheme is. But on this one, we're going to go and look at the very detailed aspects of it. And more importantly, the quirks that the scheme has within QuickBooks Online and how to get around them. My name is Aaron Patrick, and I think this video is going to be a cracker. Let's have a look. My name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of account here at Buffix. Now, as I said in the intro, this is all about the flat rate scheme. So we're going to spend some time with the flat rate scheme now and look at the quirks within QuickBooks Online. So before we go any further, let's set the scene exactly what we're going to be using today. Well, if you've seen the video over on the Boffix channel, you'll recognize this little spreadsheet here. And this is the standard scheme. So the idea that we would have £100 of sales with £20 of VAT, £20 of expenses or £24 of expenses with £4 of VAT, giving me a £20 VAT on sales, £4 of expenses. I'd expect to spend £16 in my VAT return on the standard scheme. If I jump to the flat rate scheme though, everything changes. We ignore the expenses completely. We take the £120, we ties it by our 12% in this case of our flat rate scheme, giving us the amount to pay 14. That is our VAT return at the bottom there. Oh, move that over. <laughs> that would be the VAT return there. And then just for completeness, again, if you've watched the video, you'll see exactly what we looked at but we looked at the profit and loss savings over here and we're gonna see that in QuickBooks Online. So we got a saving or a gain of two pound in this particular scenario. And then over here, how our account should look like now. So there's our profit and loss account there. There's our balance sheet. And then finally, our, our accounts look like when we do the flat rate scheme. So there's our profit and loss account and there's our balance sheet. So the first quirk I wanna show you lot is gonna be how that works in QuickBooks Online. So first of all, let's look at the scenario we've got now. So if I go over to taxes and I go to prepare my return. You'll notice in this scenario, I've got £20 up here. I've got £4 of VAT being claimed, giving me £16 of VAT. £100 in my sales, £20 in my purchases. For completeness, I'm just going to show you what the... And what we're going to do is going to duplicate tab and duplicate tab so we can come back to them. So if we complete this, I'm going to jump in my profit and loss report. Look at all dates, just so I've got everything shown there. You can see here I've got £100 of sales, £20 of purchases, give me £80 of profit. I'll have a look at my balance sheet. All dates just to be safe. You'll notice I've got £96 cash on hand, £16 of VAT control account, leaving me £80 profit and loss, which is my retained earnings. Now, what we're going to do now, so that's what it is looks like now, we're going to see how QuickBook handles it when we move from one to the other. So I'm going to go edit that, edit settings, and I'm going to turn on my flat rate scheme with a percentage, 12%. Save. Now, if I prepare my return, You'll notice that I now have that £14 and 40p in if I was doing it exactly, but let's just see it as £14. I have no input VAT or no reclaimed VAT on purchase at this point in time, which I expect, giving me a gain of £1.60. So the gain itself is shown directly on the VAT return. And that's one of the good quirks with QuickBooks Online and flat rate scheme the gain or profit and loss on gain is shown directly on the return itself. Now remember, from your point of view, that means that you have to make sure that you've been counted or included, shall I say, all the expenses and what VAT rate they would have been applicable to. But you wouldn't have to be going through each individual expense with a fine tooth comb like you would do normally, because you can make sure or you can at least adapt that to try and find roughly what that 
gain and loss is going to be. Now do remember, if you do have a loss at this point, don't think that is a complete negative. Think also how much quicker this process has been, being on the flat rate scheme compared to the standard scheme. And think to yourself, actually, have I saved money by the amount of time that I've saved using the flat rate scheme? So it's not always have you made a gain on the scheme itself, but also consider the time that you've gained as well, because there's always going to be a monetary value to that time also. Let's have a look at the rest. Okay, so to make the quirks come into play that I want to make them into play, I'm just going to use this mark as filed option and pretend effectively that I've filed this back return. Now that I've done that for completeness, let's go and look at what our profit and loss account looks like now. So remember, it was £80 net income before. Run report. Now I've got that savings by flat rate scheme. I'm going to say £2, but it's £1.60 is the amount that's come through, meaning that actually my net income this time is £81.60. I've gained that £1.60, that £2, because of the flat rate scheme. So one of the quirks is it automatically posts that savings by FRS for you. You don't have to do that calculation. So on my balance sheet, I have £96 in my bank account. And I have £14.40 in this case in my VAT suspense. So that's the amount I need to pay over to the VAT man. And that basically means then I'm left my £81.60 of profit, exactly how we showed you in that last flat rate scheme video over on Boffix. So quirk number one is QuickBooks is going to automatically post the profit and loss and gain of you. So you can keep an eye on that. Make sure that everything is actually intended as it should be. Now, all these have been positives of how QuickBooks is starting to work with flat rate scheme. Now we're going to go on to some limitations that you need to be aware of. So let's go and have a look at that. The limitation is, is now that we filed that return, so the June return has now been filed, it does mean some quirks within QuickBooks Online and it's only related to flat rate scheme. First of all, if I was to now go in and look at my invoice and go to the invoice that was related to that £20 of VAT or the £120 for the flat rate scheme, and I wanted to make an amendment to this, so let's say I change the date, You're going to get this error message. Something's not quite right. Any transaction in the VAT period marked as filed can't be changed on the flat rate scheme. If you need to update something, just create a new transaction. So you can't make any amendments to this one. So, for example, on this particular case, what that means then is I can't make any amendments to that transaction. But if I was going to go in and credit note that one, so I'm going to do 29 for the 6 as well. Sales, flight rate scheme, 100, 20%, save and close. What will happen is this transaction might affect the VAT return you've already filed. If this is the case, the VAT amount for the agency will be brought forward into the current period. Do you wish to continue? Press yes. I posted that credit note, meaning that if I now prepare my next return, suddenly I've got an exceptions account coming in and that's how we will deal with exceptions. So on the original scheme or the normal standard VAT scheme, you could just go in and amend that transaction. On this one though, you've got to be more mindful of that and you've got to create additional transactions to be able to amend it. It's not the end of the world. For most transactions, we have the opposite. So from an invoice, we can then post a credit note to make that adjustment and we can post it on the same date if we need to. It'll bring it through as an exception. And for suppliers wise, we can go in and we can put a credit supply credit in here and we can put it in and, and credit that is needed. Just remembering to mark as paid and everything should be fine. So there's one quirk for you. You can't go in and you can't make amendments to a VAT return that's already been filed. Effectively, that return has been locked, which is very different to how the standard VAT works within QuickBooks Online. So if you do need to make any amendments, you do need to make adjustments, you just got to be a little bit more quirky about it and you're going to have to use credit notes to be able to make adjustments if you need to be negative or post an additional invoice, for example, if you need to add additional funds to it. The other quirk in QuickBooks Online is how do you deal with expenditure? Now, within the flat rate scheme, the only expenditure allowed are for capital items. So those are items over £2,000. So how do I bring that into QuickBooks Online? Well, we've already seen if we post transactions in, as in just standard expenses, they don't get brought into QuickBooks. There's one little area that you need to look at. Have a look. If I was going to put an expense in, and let's say it's a natural fixed asset. So if I put an item in here for £2,000, you'll notice I have an option here for VAT reclaimable. 
And even a little quest, a little, a little thing saying if it's over two thousand pound, you're allowed it. Tick the little box, press save and close. And what that means, if I go and look at my reports now, uh, at my, that means if I look at my VAT return now, VAT return. You'll notice suddenly I have that 3,333, which is the VAT on the £2,000, shown as an expense going against the £432. And the other net value of purchases will be there for me as well. Another quirk is if you change your VAT flat rate scheme percentage. Now, the flat rate scheme percentage can change for various reasons. One of them could be the fact that you've now gone for your first full year and now you're not entitled to that 1% discount. Another one could be a change in the VAT code. So at the moment, we've got a lot of VAT code changes because of hospitality went down to five percent now 12.5 going to go back to 20 percent later down the line so that means it's going to affect the flat rate scheme for anyone in the hospitality sector also you may change the way that you do business or your flat rate scheme percentage might change per hmrc there's various reasons why the flat rate scheme changes but the way you deal with it in quickbooks you're going to have to be really careful so have a look to change your vat percentage so at the moment i'm 12 percent. i go to edit settings up here from edit settings, I can go and say, let's say that I've now used up my 12%. I'm now back in there and I could say that the change was the 1st of the 7th, 21. Well, that means if I now prepare my next return, the flat rate percentage is now 13%, which means it is calculated it back at the new amount. And it's gonna tell me now that I've gained 132, which is different to what was previously shown. Now, if you've got a nice period where the same percentage is throughout that whole period, then you're absolutely fine. But what if this percentage changes midway through the period? What if, for whatever reason, you've got two different periods you need to take into account for? Well, in that case, you're gonna to have to think about things in a little bit of a different way. And the only way for you to really consider that or think about that is by putting a effective percentage in place that's going to calculate that for you. Let's have a look. So for this example, you'll see that we've had to split our month into different weeks. Let's say for whatever reason, it was the 17th, there was a final day of our 12% and actually the 18th that we went up to our 13%. Now this is more likely gonna be if you had a three month period and you had two months was in one, one month was the other and you haven't calculated it, but the principle works exactly the same. So for this, what I need to do is I need to transfer this over to a spreadsheet and I need to basically go in and fill in the blank. So I'm going to say it's £1,000 here, £100 there, and £2,000 there. And all I'm doing is splitting my, my month into different periods. So in this one, it's period one, two, three, four, five. Each one of them is going to be different weeks. And then what we've got here is the different sales we've occurred in each one. So I've got my net sale there, 1,000, net sale there, 100, net sale there, 2,000. Give me 3,100 net sales, which is there. Now, importantly, for flat rate scheme purposes, I need to then gross that up. Thankfully, it's all at 1.2% or 20%. So I was able to get to 3,720. And I put my scheme in each one. So again, let's say that at 12%, uh, the last day of my 12% was on the last day in this period, which this one was the 17th. And then going forward was 13% going forward. Well, that means then I need to find the effective rate. Now, I can't just use the average because that comes out at 12.4%. That'd give me £461.28p, which isn't what I need. Um, so there, if I add up the VAT, so I'm doing it manually here, so I'm saying, right, that's 1440, 14.4, £312, would give me £470.40. That's the answer that I need if I was putting the same, if I was doing a correct percentage, flat rate percentage, against the actual period. So this is the figure I'm working to. Now again, I can't do my date range, so I can't say, well, there's three days here, seven days there, seven days there, seven days, and effective the VAT round there. That one will give me the wrong percentage, and it gave me 12.5%, which is closer than 12.4%, but still not right. What I need to do is I need to do an average based on sales. So basically, because this a thousand pound, hundred pound, and two thousand pound, I need to base the average based on how much money is here. So for this one, for this thousand pound here, it's at 12%. This one, 100%, so that's an effective rate of 3.9% for that period. £100 over the 12% will give me 0.4%, and the £2,000 at 13% will give me 8.4%. When I add all them together, then I get my 12.6%, and it's the 12.6% I want to be using in there, which gives me the £407.40. So if you've got a split period like this, you're going to need to remember 12.6%, 
because we've had to work that out manually. We've had to work that outside of QuickBox. And that's when I can jump into taxes, go to edit, go to edit settings, change my percentage, 12.6%, press save, prepare return, £470.58 just here, which is the figure we're looking to get, uh, plus or minus a few pence difference, because effectively it's not 12.6%, it's 12.654%, but you know, you're there or you're as good as you're going to get it with this point in this methodology. Problem is though, your exceptions has now been adjusted. So if you remember, our exceptions have been £14.40. Now the problem is the exceptions are going to go against the new VAT percentage. We want that exception to go into the old one. So that's when you do have to use the adjust button to bring the exceptions back in line. Maybe clean up this as well, just so you can get the exact percentage that you're looking for. Now the other quirky thing is if you turn off flat rate scheme, so if you come away from flat rate scheme, you then are able to make any adjustments you want to. So it will take off that lock for you, something you may want to keep in mind if you've got any major adjustments to make. And that's it, some major quirks within QuickBooks Online and the flat rate scheme. What do you think about it? I think the major one there is that you need to remember that that locks the period in. As soon as you submit that VAT return or mark as filed, that period is then locked for you to make any other adjustments to. So something to really bear in mind on that. The other thing to remember as well is that if you need to do a split percentage, you're gonna to have to be really quirky with the percentage you use, and you're gonna to have to basically effectively create for you or create outside of QuickBooks the correct percentage to use and then amend it. The other option could be is via Excel, you've figured out what the, what the flat rate scheme should be, and you could make an adjustment on that, so whichever works best for you. Let me know below, have you found any other quotes within the flat rate scheme that we should be aware of? Let the comments know below, and then we can make a follow-up video if needed. My name has been Alan Patrick. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this video. Hopefully, you've been able to see the flat rate scheme has many, many, many benefits for you and your small business. The idea that the flat rate scheme is there to help small business not just survive, but thrive, which is the motto here at Boffix. But do be aware that as QuickBooks Online makes it really easy for you to do your flat rate scheme calculations, it also has some limitations you need to be aware of. With that being said, still a thumbs up from us. Definitely the way we would do our flat rate scheme. Just keeping in mind those limitations as needed. And for now, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.